Hey everyone, are you ready to continue working on the vintage boardwalk quilt? Let's work on block 12. Hi Kimberbell friends, Kristen Som here and it's time to work on block 12 of our vintage boardwalk quilt. You know what's cool though? Block 12 is our last applique block. We still have more appliques to do, but those are designated as vinyl blocks or some other classification. So we are in the last of our designated applique blocks. I think that's pretty cool. We're getting really far along and we've only been doing this one week today. So number 12 is food stand. And this one has some um, special information that we're going to have to really be attention, pay attention to. So let's start by going over the basics. So we've got our gray with white dots as our main fabric. And that is cut to 10 and a half by 12 and a half. And as always, I back it with fusible mesh stabilizer to ward off puckers and keep it nice and crisp. And then for our table, this is the table. We're going to use this stripe fabric, the red and white stripes. And this one we want cut to six and a half by four and a half. And please notice it is directional. So you want the long part to be the six and a half of them, the stripes going uh, vertical. All right. So that's our for the table. And then next we have the red with white dots. And that one is for the umbrella. And we cut it to eight by three and a half. All right, and I do back all of my applique pieces with fusible mesh stabilizer as well. Um, you can use heat and bond if you're going to iron the pieces on afterward. That works fine also. That's what I do for shirts. But for quilting, I generally just use uh, mesh stabilizer on the back of the applique pieces. All right, and then lastly, our last fabric is the white houndstooth. And that one is for the umbrella accent. And we're going to cut it to six and a half by two. And again, backed with stabilizer. All right, and then we need two pieces of four inch cording. We're gonna use that in our design and after we tack them down, which we'll go over all the steps, but afterward we're gonna need our water soluble stabilizer to um, keep them in place while we do the appliques. We'll go over all of that. So um, the other thing is we need our threads. I am using the Vintage Boardwalk Official Thread Kit and we are going to need um, white, red, and brown, which I just dropped, sorry about that, <laughs> the brown. And then I've chosen for the quilting, I'm gonna use pink for my background quilting. And for the quilting, our final cut size of this design is eight and a half by ten and a half so we want a quilting design that is eight by ten and i've chosen food one and i'm really excited about it it's got um like cotton candy and something else and it'll be so cute for this food stand that'll be a really fun one so as far as the specific directions on cutting so if you're not quilting then you need to follow the directions in the guide for cutting but since we are quilting it's going to be a little bit different and actually easier Year. So for those that aren't quilting, you have to line it up um, in a way that you're going to cut it with, there's going to be a placement line. And again, we'll go over all of this. But for us that are quilting, it's going to be a lot easier because we're going to move it down in the very beginning. Um, after we do our quilting, we're going to move the design down so that the um, food stand is at the bottom of our batting. And then we have quilting up at the top. So the point is you want it to look like the food stand's not floating, it's down at the bottom. And if you joined me for um, Boulevard, that Boulevard pillow by Kimberbell, we did that on all the blocks. So this will be second nature to you, but it, it'll be easy and we'll go over all of it. And um, so last night I had a friend over, my friend Christy came over and we're working on another Kimber Bear. Have you seen that Kimber Bear tutorial I did? So I'm working on another one. It's obviously not 
done yet <laughs> but he's looking so cute already so anyway if you haven't made one of these watch the tutorial it's fun and and they're so cute so anyway off topic <laughs> so let's get started on food stand our last applique block we're just jamming along in this quilt and having so much fun with it Okay, time to finally get this block started. So as always, we're going to do the quilting first. This one has some very specific instructions. I am using my 9 by 14 hoop. I've given instructions on how to do um, multiple hoopings with a 5 by 7 hoop. So let's go ahead and get this started. And if I didn't mention, if you have a 6 by 10 hoop, um, you could just do two hoopings instead of, I think it was four for a five by seven. Um, so if you have a six by 10 hoop, you would want to do four by 10 twice because you, your overall quilting, you want to be eight by 10. I hope that helps. So we're about to start the quilting and just like usual, center your fabric over the batting. You can see the placement line there. Just center your fabric. It's not your fabric that's going to move when you're using the large hoop. It's the design um, after the quilting. So we'll get there. Okay, so now that we have our quilting done, and oh my gosh, isn't that so cute? Oh, I seriously giggled while I was watching this stitch out. All right, sorry. So um, it says in the directions that we want our food stand to be at the bottom edge of the block. So for those of us that are quilting, it's so easy to do this. Okay, now that we have um, easily rotated our design, I want to show you that we go to these buttons to be able to see um, how to move it down. So the design will show right at the center of our design. You can see the center here. All right, so if we do these buttons, then it'll show us the bottom of the design. All right, so it just moves the needle to what is currently the bottom of the design. I'm going to move this up so that you can see. So the bottom of the design is up here, but we actually want it down here. And because this 
uh, placement stitches here. This is for the people that are going to um, use that line to know where to line up their background fabric. We're going to bypass that just that stitch because we don't need that. We've already got our um, background fabric placed. So, but since it's part of the design, we do have to be able to allot for it because we we it's part of the sizing if that makes sense so bottom line is instead of the first stitch being up here we're going to want it down here so we first use these buttons like i showed you to have it go to the bottom of the design so that it's there on our machine and then we're going to go up here to edit oh sorry we were already there <laughs> and go to move and we're going to bring the design down using these buttons so every time that we press this down button it is moving our design down and we're going to line it right up with the bottom of this placement line this is our placement stitch for our main fabric so we're going to use that as our guide for this first stitch which we're going to bypass but this will make it so that this part of the design the bottom of this food stand will be right at our batting line which is where we want the design because then we've still got our quarter inch seam allowance and we've got it, the design right at the bottom of our batting all right so it's so easy because all we had to do was move this out of the way make sure i move it back before stitching but you can move that out of the way. You actually don't even have to because you can feel where the batting is. But if you want to be um, really good with placement, you just easily move this under the needle and you can see exactly where to start the design. All right, let's do this. All right, as I mentioned, this first stitch is just for those that have not quilted before. So you can bypass that. You can stitch it if you want to, but... Um, it's probably a basting stitch that you could just pull out, but even if you didn't, it's going to be at the very bottom and it won't be after we cut, you're not going to see it anyway. So it's up to you. I'm not going to stitch it. I'm sure you know how to bypass the stitch, but if not, you just go to this where it's got the plus and minus and then go to the next step, which is that one. Oh, and by the way, so this is to hold down our fabric. Um, uh, what, basting stitch to hold down your fabric we don't need that either because we've already quilted we're already stuck in the hoop so we don't need that either I'm going to bypass that one as well all right and then we go right to the cord um, placement stitch <laughs> 